The web is about information accessibility. It's really a basic human freedom that we're just Marie beginning Rainey. to talk about in the last decade. Director of Web Communications um, Technologies. It's important, therefore, that everybody have this freedom. You, any freedom that's only allotted to a few is not really a freedom. Jason Sivjian. The web is about information. User experience and, team manager, uh, University of Washington. It's important that people can access the information that they need in order to complete a workflow or get their job done, finish a task. Amy Brown. I think the web should be accessible to everyone all the time. I grew up with it being easily accessible to me. Student web developer. Um, it's how I learned information easily. Western Washington University. Um, I can't imagine someone not being able to just Google something instantly and getting what they need. Max Bronsemna. I think websites should be accessible. Lead web developer. Uh, because Western Washington University. The web was founded kind of on this idea of sharing information. And if you can't share information, or if some people can't see it, then it's not truly being shared. A montage, web pages, a handheld device, an instructor with a student, more pages, one with enlarged text. Words appear. IT accessibility. What do web developers have to say? Jacob Nelson, web production specialist, UW Medicine. We all have different abilities and disabilities. And if we're all going to be able to get the same content and interpret it in a somewhat similar fashion, it has to be given to us in that way and accessible so that we can actually reach it. Rick Ells. Accessibility is important for a number of reasons. Webmaster. Uh, for one, there are laws that apply. UW Information Technology. Uh, another is it can relate to our reputation. And a third is that uh, by paying attention to it, we create a more inclusive educational environment. Dylan Wilbanks. I think we are really good as developers at being web developer focusing on the 80 percent case designer focusing on how do we make four out of every five of our users happy how do we build things for those group of people because that last 20 percent is always hard but i say if the web's for 100 percent it's for everybody which is what tim berners lee said william washington i definitely am really moved by this notion of inclusiveness i mean i think that for me is a part of why this is um, important to me. But um, there's also just the, the sort of... User experience um, architect, University of Washington. The notion of, of having everybody's contributions to the, the sort of the knowledge. Evan Derrickson. The big challenge is to escape your own viewpoint and to not make the assumption that everyone sees the web the way you see it on the device you see. Student web developer, um, Western Washington University. The way you use it. And so when you're creating web pages, that's the biggest challenge, is uh, getting outside of where you're sitting. And the biggest obstacle to accessibility, I think, is, is pure knowledge. It's really about putting yourself in the mind of a person with disabilities, a person who has, who has no motor skills, has no hands, has you know, lack of vision, has a lack of hearing. Um, may have a cognitive disability, to be able to put yourselves in their shoes and understand how are they working with the thing that I'm building or designing right now? Can they use it? The alternative is you build something, someone says, oh no, it's not accessible, and so you go back to try to fix it, but you probably have been doing the wrong thing in many places. Uh, you know, you may have hundreds of images with no alt, in, alt texts, you may have navigation that's very confused or you're relying on libraries that assistive technologies aren't going to figure out. Um, and so that's when someone says, oh, it's too much, too expensive, it's too much work. Well, just do it from the beginning, and it'll, you'll probably get a quality product with less work. Accessibility is important to incorporate early on, because if you don't incorporate it early on, you will incorporate it later at greater expense, with a certain amount of time that you don't have, a certain amount of money you don't have to try to make it better. Accessibility, unfortunately, like everything else in design and web design, has to be done from the very beginning. So whether you're dividing for different devices, whether you're doing for different kinds of human abilities, all those things have to be thought of from the very beginning and built into your concept of what your, your plan is. And of course, nobody wants to take time at the end. We're almost there. We just want to get it out. And that's the mistake many of us make. It's like, well, I'll just get it out, and then I'll go back and fix it. No, it doesn't ever happen. It was the ne next project. The first step in getting an accessible site is to work with the management so they understand the value of making it accessible. And also helping them understand that um, we can do pretty much anything they want and be accessible. If you just talk about accessibility... Kyle Russell, doctoral student. It may not be immediately appreciated as something important to do, but if you start talking about 
quality and uh, UW College of Education overlap of search engine optimization and accessibility and things of that nature that that will tend to get people's attention more. When I started, I I was a designer. I want to make things look pretty, and you don't think about anything besides the aesthetics. And what I soon realized was that when you have something that works, it already looks good, right? So. That's where I started to move towards things being functional. And then the beauty came along after that. I don't believe that making a site accessible inhibits creativity. In fact, I would argue it, it, it helps creativity, it improves creativity. Good accessible design often closely relates to good usable design. And we found a really close parallel between good mobile design, mobile for mobile devices, and the simplicity and clarity of good accessible design. On an iPad. Safari. Skip to primary content. In page link. He taps the screen. Current students. Future students. Menu item. Accessible technology. So they're, they're all interrelated. And basically if you're making really complicated sites with lots of stuff on them and you're doing using different methods all over the place, uh, you're probably not building that great a site anyway. The way we create websites today has improved from 10 years ago. We're not using inline styles. We're not only designing for one screen size. So the developers and designers are forced to design for every person and every device. We can't go backwards. We can't become limited again. Primarily what you can do as a designer to, um, to check for accessibility is making sure that you have good uh, headings. Um, good proper headings and heading structure, um, good uh, labels on inputs, um, good labels on buttons and links, so making sure that you're using the right tags. And the second uh, best thing I would say, uh, at least that I do, are um, checking with the keyboard, just looking to see keyboard navigation, making sure that the, you know, there's good focus indicators and that you don't get the focus trapped anywhere. Part of the challenge in uh, sort of the development world is that Many developers, you know, look around and find open source libraries of really cool stuff. So they find ways to make things bounce across the screen or make things get big and small and so on. And it just doesn't enter their mind to evaluate them for accessibility. When you're looking at a JavaScript library or a content management system piece of code that you would like to use, you need to look both at does it do what you want for the web and does it also, is it also accessible? In other words, does it do it for you and for everybody? So as soon as you develop something, you go back and you check it and check it over and over again. And on multiple browse, browsers, multiple machines, you know, I'll even call people, you know, overseas and say, hey, can you, can, you, can you find it? Can you check it? Is it working for you? Well, okay, good, you know. And now they have tools out there where you can check on every single browser out there. In the past, that was really important, and it still is. Um, we have a few browsers out there, like a handful of browsers that we use. But we need to check it on, on every possible system and platform. The best thing that you can do ultimately to check a design, be it checking for usability or accessibility, it's actually putting it in front of users and seeing if they can use it. You know, no matter how great your site is, you know, you may think you're hitting all the standards and then you watch someone go through it and you say, well, wow, they, <laughs> that didn't work out so well. When I think of what a university does at, at its core, it's to not take everyone with very similar ideas and turn out people with those same ideas, but it's to, it's to benefit from a broad range of abilities and skills and, and different perspectives. And I see accessibility and, and disability as being a part of that spectrum. I think accessibility needs to be talked about more. It needs to be taught in the, institution, in the schools. It needs to be for, enforced in institutions and commercial environments. As new technology comes out, I, I think there will be some that just neglect it completely and others that champion it and the ones that champion it will be more user friendly to everybody else they'll win in the marketplace. I think the future of the web um, is to be making fewer and fewer assumptions about how other people use it. We have mobile devices, we have um, screen readers and we even have your web page or your content might be used by another machine. So I think the future of the web is to continue making fewer and fewer assumptions and uh, more universal content that is not restrictive or exclusive. I think it can be very challenging for certain, for certain applications to serve people with disabilities. But that should, that's where the engineer needs to think about 
why did I become an engineer? To make the impossible possible. To solve big problems. And this is a big problem, so let's attack it. Let's solve it. Words appear. For more information about IT accessibility, consult www.uw.edu slash accessibility. This video presentation was created with funding from UW Information Technology at the University of Washington. Copyright 2013, University of Washington. Permission is granted to copy these materials for educational, non-commercial purposes, provided the source is acknowledged. Described by AudioEyes.